I am known as Yogi Bahan in 60s. <coughs> to pronounce correctly, it is Yogi Bhajan. Um, you have come here for help. Actually, you have not come for your help. You have to come to here to learn. Where is your spirit? We people of this age cannot talk to you because we do not know your language. These people are all lying and they're going to lie to you. For our there is a war between character and corruption. And don't misunderstand, sometimes character will win, sometimes corruption will win. It will go on and on and on. But if your motive is consciousness, always character will win. If motive is ego, always corruption will win. There are no two ways about it. After years of working, they finally built the world's most powerful computer, the big thing, and it, it just was the most supercomputer. So they got it all fired up, and they said, what's the meaning of life? And the computer whirled and light swirled, and out comes the computer says, let me tell you a story. Premka has, uh, uh, her name is Pamela Dyson, is the author of the book has published a story. And you as the reader have to decide what you want to do with the story. Now I'm sure all of you are fans of Lee Nichols, who in 1981 wrote a novel called The Eyes of Darkness. You're not, I see. <laughs> How about Dean Koontz? who wrote 105 novels, sold over 450 million copies. Uh, that was his pseudonym, he, uh, Lee Nichols. 1981, he wrote a book called The Eyes of Darkness about a virus that is a weaponized virus that's created and it goes out and it uh, kills people. And then once the body starts to die, the virus disintegrates and vanishes. So in other words, they can go put the virus in a town and wipe out the town, and then there's no virus there they can move in. So they have all the infrastructure, but none of the people. And he called, 1981, and he called this virus in his novel, uh, Wuhan 400, <laughs> because it was de developed in our research labs outside the city of Wuhan. And the story's about a guy named Danny who's kidnapped uh, because Danny's the only person they've found who's immune to the virus. And Pamela Dyson's story can be taken as a virus. It depends what you want to do with it. This is your choice. The whole notion is you can, everyone's allowed to tell their story. Everyone has the freedom to express themselves. No one is being denied the right to tell your story. Then the question becomes, what's truth? It's your truth. You decide what you want to believe in the story. Someone, I think, needs to speak up on behalf of Yogi Bhajan. She's making claims against him that date back 50 years ago. Or she stated from 69 to 85. And that's when the book ends in 85. So that's 35 years ago, or 50 years ago. Just let's, let's put 50 years in perspective. 50 years, 1995 back to the end of World War II, that's 50 years. World War II, back 50 years, is 1895. She's talking about a relationship she had with this person called Yogi Bhajan in 1969. And she begins the book with her, her this abortion that she had, which she claims was Yogi Bhajan's child. He's been dead for 15 years. Who knows what happened? But some people want to read the story and go in a certain direction with the story. That's their personal choice. That's their personal truth. That's their personal decision. It's perfectly okay. I don't feel 
that I did I lost anything by coming to United States. I don't think my suffering was not blessing. I don't feel that every effort to hurt me was not absolutely out of the way. I thought the people who hurt me, people who slandered me, people who abused me, people who wanted to harm me were very kind. They kept my foot in my mouth. They kept me alert. They didn't get me to be blind in my ego. I am, I am saying it very openly and honestly. I am grateful to Karta Puruk and I am grateful to Sadarni Prem Kakor Khalsa for making this most obnoxious and most terrible lawsuit on me. If that lawsuit would not have hit us at that time, when I was so sick, the whole community would not have been together. Hey, Mukhalaf, tera shukriya. Teri wajah se hum parwaz baithe hain. Oh, opposite wind, thank you. By that grace, we are flying so high. Enemies are not bad things. They are wonderful people. They put the whole thing at risk to just keep you so that you can pray. Because when you are in love, if you do not pray, then in fear you will. There are only two forces, love and fear. Either a person will relate out of the fear concept or a person will relate to you out of love concept. There is no other concept. Choice is yours. Every bulb has positive and negative. Filament is you which is neutral. If there is a light, it has to have negative and positive. The current must flow. Choice is yours which one you want to touch. Both will give you shock. Life is not given to you just to create a nuisance. You take the life and create the nuisance. You know, you can ask Gurdirat, my chancellor, on oath. He could not make me till the end of the case. Read the complaint. He says, sir, read it. This is a lawsuit against you. I said, no, don't worry. I love them. It'll be taken care of. Because a relationship and love cannot be cashed in vengeance. I say the lawsuit is against me, against the property, against the dharma which belong to the future of the Khalsa, who am I? It is Guru's properties, it's Guru's way. Some people will cause trouble and cracks, it will go on. Those who left, who left, they left their destiny. You leave destiny, you fall into fate. You jump from fate into destiny, impossible. From destiny to fate, yes. If you give distance to your destiny, you have the right of free will. That's all it's called, my will, free will, and all that. You can give distance to your destiny. Or you can live it. What's not being told is that after Premka is her name, Yogi Bhajan names her Premka, which means beloved, and he instructs her to write Peace Lagoon, which is the English translation of the Sikh prayers. One day I was sitting there and I said, Premka, you got to do some job. She said, what? I said, don't say it like that. It's a good job. 
and I told her to write down a book of Peace Lagoon and translate a few Banis in it. Why I said that? In the beginning of the Peace Lagoon there are two poems which she wrote in the consciousness of a disciple to master. No disciple has almost touched to that level in English. The highest disciple love letter is written by Guru Arjun to Guru Ram Das, and we call it Shabad Zare. It was desire to translate all that, because when I read her those two poems, the qualifying the impact of those poems were that I, in my own consciousness, humbling myself before God and Guru, felt very sincerely that Pramka if puts her heart into it, she can translate Gurbani in a befitting English. After she prepared all that translation, the rough copy of Peace Lubu, she asked me another American question, who will print it? And why I have done what I have done? I said, just keep it with you, anywhere we go, that's all. So she carried that big bundle of papers with her, angrily annoyed that if this whole work get lost, how can I do it again? And why he is making me to carry? Mind was very devoted, but very doubtful at the same time. Because Pamela and Premka are two different consciousnesses and change has to play, take place. But things must be done gradually. So what was the consciousness asking for and questioning at the same time but two different consciousnesses? So anyway, she carried the book. And the, that consciousness of a disciple, not of a person, because a person is not a disciple, a disciple is not a person. So she has, the, she has the, the, the flow of the poet. She has the flow, and that's why the book is convincing, it's compelling. And read it. If you want to follow that story, it, it's, it's there. And then you can express yourself. No one's trying to hold anyone back from expressing themselves. But Yogi Bhajan says her mind was very devoted but doubtful at the same time because Pamela, who was she, she was, and then she became Premka, then she became Pamela, she wrote the book under Pamela, and Premka are two different consciousnesses. The change has to take place but things must be done gradually. The consciousness at the same time was trying to figure out which way to go. And she fell in love with a guy she wanted to marry Yogi Bhajan was against it. She decided to go anyway. And she left Yogi Bhajan. And what's not being told is that she then sued him, claiming rape and, and uh, uh, racketeering and all sorts of things. And then later admitted the story I heard that she made it all up. The book is a rehash of the lawsuit. And she made the whole uh, lawsuit up because she needed money. And sometime in the 1990s, I had some Indian Sikhs working for me, and I went to a lady's house. She bought a house, and her husband had a lot of friends. And I was the only American Sikh there, Indian Sikhs. And this guy sat down next to me, and he said, do you know who Premka is? I said, sure. He said, well, you know, I was the guy that handed her the pay, gave her the money to file the lawsuit. I said, really? I said, how much you give her? He goes, 75 grand. I said, really? She did it for that little amount? He goes, we, we low-balled her, and she, she went for it. So that's not in the book. The book ends before that lawsuit, right? Then after the lawsuit is, is dismissed, she needs money. She comes back, and Yogi Bhajan takes her back in. It's a love story. It's a love story that went wrong. It didn't work out. Just understand, 18 years we have been calm and quiet and slowly. There was some leadership which could not be the leadership, they left. They could not 
deliver the leadership. Amar says, you can make somebody a leader, but it is not essential that they will deliver the leadership. And when they did not deliver the leadership, they had no way to just be the leaders. So they decided not to humble themselves, but to lead. But they are interlocked. You have to understand that. So they couldn't lead. So we always in this 3HO has a dropout center, always, I mean, from day one. And now this dropout center has developed into lawsuits, you know. Now, the flag bearer of this foundation, Sardarni, Mukhya Sardarni Saiba, Sardarni Premka Kaur Khalsa, these Sakti Janu, claims in the case, that's her claim, that this dharma is a racketeer. That's her case. And collecting the swand, or asking any collection of money, is racketeering. That's her claim in the case. And do you know for all these years, she's the one who was sending the letters? Are you aware of that? You must have received those letters. She was the one who was in charge of it. Initiated it, developed it, and worked it. And now she says, I am racketeering. You can't find one letter from my side asking you to pay this one. There's none. And this is the lawsuit. Can you believe, anybody of you, on oath, that Mukhya Sardarni Sahiba, Sardarni Premka Kaur Khalsa, was a hostage or a captive for 18 years? Can you believe it? By any fluke of chance? She's the most traveled individual of her time. She has visited all the ashram. She was free to do what she could do. But I'm just explaining to you, the impact is lost but in fact is interlocked. And she is five months pregnant today. And before she left, I said, Pramga, my dear love and child of the Guru, I want to tell you certain things. And she said, what? I said, you told me to fix this marriage, I have fixed it. But just remember, with a child or two, you're going to come back. Don't burn the bridges. And she said, what now? I said, just give me a period of grace so that I can just do it in a way which is just befitting to you, not befitting to me. You are not an ordinary person and you can't do certain things which you are trying to do. What else? I say, here the life is paid. In your world, where are you going? You have to pay the bills. And you're not going to like it. Then she told me, God above me, in Guru's presence, you will be proud of me. Here we go. Because the impact is interlocked. It cannot be separated. Love has turned into hatred. Life has turned into misery. Higher consciousness has turned to lower consciousness. There's nothing to it. And we are all responsible for our life, remember this. We are all responsible for our misery. If you want to know, am I responsible for my misery? Yes. Yes.
If tomorrow I am asked to deny anyone, I shall not. And majority of the time I'm told I'm insane. And I accept it. It does take that kind of insanity to have that kind of compassion, to have that kind of kindness, to respect the individual who does not deserve respect, to trust an individual who does not deserve trust, to love an individual who does not deserve to be loved. I am not saying that I am right. All I'm saying is I'm duty-bound. It is the character of the Siri Singh Saab to be utmost compassionate, and whosoever is going to walk in my shoes has to be much more than even me. Otherwise, don't ask for that chair. That chair has unseen nails. If I Chief Religious Administrative Authority of the Sikh Dharma fails to be compassionate, fails to be kind, fails to be inspiring, fails to be confronting, then I'm going to lead a tradition which will be nothing but a disaster, which will be total betrayal of the Dharma itself. Because with everything, impact is locked. And it's a, it's, a, it's a love story between fate and destiny. It's a love story between a teacher and disciple. It's a love story between lower consciousness and higher consciousness. And this, this story is sad. And now everyone wants to read sexual abuse into it and, and, and uh, investigate Yogi Bhajan and find out if there's truth in, in these allegations and so forth. It, that's a sad turn of events, it's a sad departure. And where does it lead people? My own case is, 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 is that I, in 1975, I didn't know anything about anything, and I met uh, a Yogi Bhajan a teacher. And I was told about Peace Lagoon, which was the book that Premka wrote. And I read this line. I don't know the Gurmukhi line. Premka says she doesn't either, but she came out of English. To one who meditates on him, him being the mantra, the sound current, there comes a perfect peace, and all pain and sorrows depart. And I thought to myself, what if that's true? What if I could meditate on the mantra, I could have a perfect peace, and all pain and sorrows depart? I'd never heard such a thing. I didn't know such a thing could be true. And so I did. And you know what? It worked. And then the only other line I remember is, is meditating on the name, the mantra, one gains all wealth of earthly goods, of mental powers and ascetic pleasures. And the illumination gained from the thought of the mantra of him is found all knowledge, all devotion, the essence of all wisdom. I've been inside those two lines for 45 years. And that's guided me, and it was Premka the poet that gave that to me. And then she, she, she wandered off. She took fate. Every human being, what story do you want to buy? What story do you want to listen to? Which story do you want to explore? Which truth do you want to go look for? The truth that's in the fate or the truth that's in the destiny? Pamela is a story of fate. This white bird in the cage is by Pamela. Peace Lagoon is by Premka. Which way do you want to go look? Do you want to go explore 
someone's version, someone's story of Yogi Bhajan's behavior, and he's 15 years left the planet, right? And this particular lady already tried to sue him on these grounds and then admitted it was false. That's not being discussed. They want to investigate allegations. Allegations of what? Someone that got lost in fate. That's the tragedy of a human life. If the story is you have destiny and you have elevated destiny and you can give distance to your destiny and if you give distance to your destiny, you can fall into fate. So from destiny, you can fall into fate. But you can't go from fate back to destiny. So the interlock remains, but you now you've been, your, your fate is sealed. And the tragedy of this story is Pamela's fate is sealed. So she's attacked once, she's attacked twice because of the interlock. And it's a sad, tragic love story. And maybe many of you may be just like Premka. For 18 years, you carry the banner. You are the vanguard of the Tarma. And you do not utter a word. 18 years later, you say everything which nobody can the planet, not here or hereafter can believe. I'm asking you in the presence of the Guru, answer my question. How many of you have seen or believe that Pramka was imprisoned for all these years on a gunpoint? I'm asking you. If anybody in the international world can tell me Pramka was brainwashed, I will like to become her disciple to teach me that method of brainwashing which she has learned. But just remember, when the mind flips, when the coin flips, then head becomes the tail. Flipped. It flipped. We cannot deal with that. It's a long story. But let us cut it short. After that flip, they have so much anger and pain. What they have lost, game. Pramka claims $25 million from me. Knowingly as a Sakti general, I don't have that. Knowingly, when I go before the Guru, I take a dollar from somebody. But, coin flips. And then it comes true. Dushman baat kare honi. Enemy shall talk a unbelievable, impossible talk. We did not ask them to leave Dharma. Pramka was not asked to leave Dharma. Even we arranged to get this marriage, we tolerated everything, we sent with love and blessing. In uh, Avakarki. Pramka, being a secretary general, has to call the meeting of the Khalsa Council. By law, it is in the bylaws. And put a resolution that Siri Singh Sahib by character, by deed, is not worthy to be Siri Singh Sahib. And could have started the debate and could have got the decision. What I'm trying to explain to you, people don't do what they should do or what they are supposed to do. It's a question of from which consciousness you are coming. 
in your higher consciousness there is nothing greater than you and in your lower consciousness there is nothing worse than you the idea that we come for sadhana we touch the guru we read the guru we listen to the kirtan we do all that is that we may not flip we may keep that balance we may keep that tranquility what i am explaining to you sikh dharma will continue without me with me with you without you whatever is happening is happening but this give you the chance to not feel perfect because god is only perfect the only way not to feel perfect and not to go in one ego is to live in gratitude feel every moment of blessing and feel grace and that is where to feel humble and thank god for putting us on the path of spirituality human is afraid to give out their emotional fantasies to anybody or sometimes they give what is not true uh, there are about 99 aspects of human life out of 100 which are based on human self protection negativity and are just lies and you must be considering all you are very truthful people and it is so habitual that human mind creates these lies for the satisfaction to cover that mind may not go near to the reality of the positive self and this way we repeat the lies indirectly directly subjectively objectively indirectly creatively non creatively and sometimes destructively this all human nature is not something somebody is forcing us to do uh when it come to the shavan push it is one individual against another individual there's no cross reference is not somebody superior or somebody is inferior my word against yours your word against me that's it if you feel that my words can lead you to some good consciousness and help you in your life you will like it you come back again and again you will try to grow and if it is not that way you will not like to participate but there's a basic urge of the soul in every person the spirit in every person they want to be pure they want to be perfect they want to be happy they want to be real now 99% lying around left and right up and down and ego and all that uh, how much uh, truthful you can be and how much happy you can be and how much uh, things you can twist in your favor is not practical because <coughs> lies have no problem lies are just truth which you manufactured is your truth 
Lie is not somebody's truth. Lies is your truth. But the nature won't support it. That's the problem. Environments, environment does not support lies, emotion, commotion, fantasies, and non-realities. Non-reality is to harm somebody, non-reality is damage somebody, non-reality is vengeance, non-reality is uh, what they call jealousy. There are all categories in which you want to damage yourself or any other person is non-reality. Because that's not what you're born for, that's not your reality. So it's your non-reality. Now, when she was queen of the realm and the secretary general and everything that could be given, she wanted to leave. So Yogi Bhajan was trying over a long negotiation, which she, she describes all this in the book, trying to get work this out so everyone could look good. And we were in Eugene, Oregon, at a tantric course. And Yogi Bhajan had gotten on the plane and Premka handed me some flowers and said, give it to him. I got on the plane. I gave the flowers to Yogi Bhajan. He, he took them. He said, who are these from? I said, Premka. He said, I don't want them. And he handed them back to me. And he looked me in the eye. And I saw infinite sadness. The most sad look I've ever experienced before or since. That's... Essentially, she had fallen into fate. And then before the sto story broke publicly that she was leaving, Yogi Bhajan came to me in a dream that morning, and he said, I wanted to take Premka too. Deeper love of the nam, of the mantra. And she didn't want that, she wanted sexual love. And then he said that this guy you want to marry is not going to be able to support you in the style you're accustomed to. And sure enough, that's what happened. And that's why she had to file the lawsuit, collect the money, and try to struggle along. And then one year, some years later, Yogi Bhajan comes one night to me, and he says, we need to go find her. I'm in the dream space. And I said, who we have to find? He said, Premka, come with me. And we went looking. And we went looking everywhere. And in my experience of that dream, this went on for years and years. And I was getting exhausted, more tired. And I said, we can't find her. We're not going to find her on this planet, off planet, wandering around almost endlessly. He said, we have to keep looking. But Premka had gone, and we never found her. Finally, he said, OK, you can go back now. So what I spent many years in that dream looking and that was the love of the master for the student that was the love of the teacher and the disciple or that's the beloved and you can go into peace lagoon where premka wrote two poems that are her poems and you can read those and understand what the devoted consciousness is like and then you can read her pamela book and find out what the fake consciousness is like and it seems, because perhaps it's the gift of the poet that's still alive in her, that the, she has put quite a number of people in a trance who now want to journey into the fate currents looking for sexual misbehavior by Yogi Bhajan that dates back 50 years or 35 years or who knows how long, and a man who's been dead 10 years or 15 years, and they want to do what to his reputation? And those, those poor people who think that they can paint slander on the walls outside 3HO and, and Sikh Dharma and KRI, and that's going to say we don't allow slander inside this place, uh, is going to allow people who want to come through the gate? I don't think so. I think that they've gotten essentially bewitched by someone who still has the power to cast a spell, and they're now looking, you know, for all the dirt that they can find under the some guise of the truth will set you free. 
Truth doesn't set you free. What sets you free is the direction you decide to take. It's tr fate is just as true as destiny. One takes you down, one takes you up. You have to decide. What's your story? At the end of the day, what did you do when you came to the planet Earth? What's your story? What was true for you? Did you help build? Did you help improve? Did you help uh, elevate? Or you, did you help destroy? Did you help uh, negativity? Did you help more pain be caused? What, what's your story? And that's you as the, as, as the reader. You have to decide what story you want to follow. And you have freedom to follow any story you want. No one's voice is being muffled or denied. Just tell your story. But is it a story that's going to help humanity, help the planet, or is it going to, a story that's going to help destroy and cause pain, cause doubt? We have people from organizations in, inside 3 show saying our hearts are broken. Your hearts are broken, why? Because you've bought the, the poet's dim voice of fate and somehow you got caught in the, in, the, in the rocks of pain and destruction and you're being bounced around and, and the, the ter terrible, terrible curse is doubt. Where you start to doubt which way you're supposed to go. But it's always very clear in your own consciousness which is your destiny and which is your fate. And you have to decide. There's a dark, there's a light, there's a night, there's a day, there's a sun, there's a moon, there's a right and there's a wrong. And that's the way it is. And which story are you going to follow? Which story are you going to, we're going to tell when you leave our realm? A lot of people had to leave Triyacho. They left. It did hurt. A lot of us were very upset and unhappy. But in reality, we could not relax anything like discipline. We could not undermine character values. We could not barter because of our emotional attachments. In certain cases, I really love those people and still love them and will live them, love them always. But I could not do a thing for them. I was totally helpless. Absolutely helpless. Honest to God. Not only I miss them, I miss them a lot. Not only they were my loved ones, they are always in my memory. All I do is pray, God help them now. But there should be no misunderstanding that I shall relax any of the rules. Because in my consciousness, <laughs> teachings have to be kept pure. People may be pure, may not be pure. Teachings cannot be polluted. I shall not add a thing, subtract a thing.
No rule shall be mended and shall accommodate highest of the high. But you're welcome. If you want to live scandal to scandal, you're welcome. If you want to live weakness to weakness, you're welcome. Forgiveness is there. But we won't forget your mistakes. Because we are responsible that you may not commit them again, again, and again. You must understand, God may forgive you, Mother Nature won't. You understand? It is going to work on your this area, the rib cage, the heart, and your magnetic field and your beats and God knows what. But it only I know is that you will be stayed forward a single loving person after you finish this. This life is a gift. You have all earned it. I cannot give you life, I cannot take your life. But I can add to it if I can. If I can't, then please ignore it. In my last 25 years in the United States, I have passed many odds. I have gone through many experiences. But one thing I always know, each man has the right to be himself and herself. If love of the spiritual teacher is in your heart, God is bound down to love you and liberate you. Any person who loves his spiritual teacher becomes Bodhisattva. So united in love, so united with God, so united with consciousness, so united with Chardi Kala. When everything, believe me, everything, everything fails, he walks little more to the victory. That one line you sing, when things are down and darkest, we walk, that's a yogi. We die before we, that's a yogi. There is a character, commitment and criteria. There is an abstract and there is a value. You do not enjoy this life, my dear friends. This life is very precious. And he says in this book, God, Good and Goods, he says, once I asked my teacher, what's the definition of a spiritual path? He said, son, it's a rose petal. It's an opportunity as exactly as much life as that petal. And it is so beautiful and sophisticated as that petal. You totally be it or you miss it and it will never come back again. It'll never come back again. Otherwise, all you will have is a dry rose petal and you can powder it but it will never be what it was. Yes.
Saturday night.